My sister ruined my life. I entered the room and saw that she was sleeping with my husband, with whom we have been married for two years. It turned out that she was pregnant from him. They say life can change in an instant, but I never believed it until that fateful night. Let me start from the beginning, from when everything seemed perfect. My name is Lisa, and two years ago I married the love of my life, Alex. Our wedding was a fairy tale and our marriage, at least to outsiders, looked picture perfect. We were the couple everyone envied, both of us successful in our careers, living in a charming house in the suburbs, always hosting lively dinner parties for friends and family. But beneath that glossy surface, something sinister was brewing, something that would shatter my world. Alex and I were madly in love, or at least I thought we were. He was the kind of man who made grand gestures, surprise getaways, flowers delivered to my office, and handwritten notes slipped into my purse. He had a way of making me feel cherished, and I basked in the glow of his affection. Our families were close-knit, especially since my younger sister Emily adored Alex and often joined us for Sunday brunches and weekend barbecues. I never thought twice about it. Emily and I had always had a complicated relationship. She was four years younger and always the more vivacious one. Growing up, she was the golden child. Beautiful, popular, and effortlessly charming. I was the serious, studious one, always in her shadow but always protective of her. Even when she made choices that drove me crazy, I stood by her. That's what sisters do, right? It was early summer when things began to change. My birthday was approaching and Alex was planning a surprise for me. Something big, he said with a twinkle in his eye. I was excited, imagining romantic dinners and perhaps a weekend getaway. I had no idea the surprise would be something I'd never forget, for all the wrong reasons. Emily showed up at our doorstep one evening, teary-eyed and clutching a suitcase. She had just broken up with her boyfriend and she needed a place to stay. Of course, I welcomed her with open arms. What kind of sister would I be if I didn't? Alex was supportive too, though I noticed a flicker of something in his eyes, a mix of concern and something else I couldn't quite place. Having Emily around was initially comforting. She brought a lively energy to our home, filling the rooms with laughter and music. But soon, I began to feel like an outsider in my own house. Alex and Emily would stay up late talking and watching movies. When I joined them, their conversations would abruptly shift leaving me feeling excluded. But I brushed it off. I was being paranoid, I told myself. After all, Emily had always had a knack for making friends quickly, and Alex was just being a good brother-in-law. The first real red flag came during a dinner party we hosted for my birthday. Emily had taken charge of the preparations, insisting she wanted to make it special for me. The evening was a blur of laughter and clinking glasses, but something was off. Alex was unusually distant, and Emily was overly attentive to him, always making sure his glass was full and his plate was served first. It irked me, but I didn't want to make a scene. It was my birthday, after all. As the night wore on, Alex received a phone call and stepped outside to take it. I watched him through the kitchen window, his face illuminated by the glow of his phone. He seemed tense, agitated even. When he returned, he was distracted, barely acknowledging my attempts to engage him in conversation, Emily was quick to cover for him, spinning some story about a work crisis. I wanted to believe her, to trust that there was a reasonable explanation for Alex's behavior. Later that night, after the guests had left and the house was finally quiet, I decided to talk to Alex about it. I found him in the living room, staring blankly at the TV. Hey, I said softly, sitting down beside him. Is everything okay? You seemed a bit off tonight. He turned to me with a weary smile. Just work stuff, Lisa. Nothing to worry about. I nodded, wanting to believe him. If you say so, but you know, I'm here if you need to talk. He pulled me into a hug, and for a moment, I felt reassured. But as I lay in bed that night, with Alex's steady breathing beside me, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. That was the beginning of the end of my perfect facade. The days that followed were filled with small, unsettling moments, an inside joke between Alex and Emily that I wasn't privy to, a lingering touch, a shared look. My unease grew, but I kept it to myself, convinced that I was imagining things. Little did I know my world was about to come crashing down in the most unimaginable way. It was two weeks after my birthday party when the cracks in my perfect life began to widen. Emily was still staying with us, her breakup apparently more devastating than she initially let on. Her presence had become a permanent fixture in our home, and while I loved my sister, I longed for the intimacy Alex and I once shared. One evening, after a particularly stressful day at work, I came home to find Emily and Alex cooking dinner together. 
they were laughing, flour smudged on their faces, and for a moment it felt like we were a happy, unconventional family. But then Emily handed Alex a spoon, and as he tasted the sauce, their eyes locked, and the look they shared was anything but familial. I cleared my throat and they both turned to me, their expressions guilty. Hey, Lisa, Emily said brightly, wiping her hands on a towel. We're making your favorite, lasagna. Thanks, I replied, forcing a smile. It smells great. Dinner was a strained affair. Alex and Emily kept the conversation flowing, but I was only half listening, my mind swirling with doubts and suspicions. Was I overreacting? Was I imagining the closeness between them? I desperately wanted to believe that everything was normal, that I was just stressed and paranoid. The next morning, I woke up early and found Emily already in the kitchen, sipping coffee and scrolling through her phone. Morning, I said, grabbing a mug. Morning, she replied, not looking up. There was a tension in her voice that I couldn't ignore. Emily, is everything okay? I asked, trying to sound casual. She finally looked at me, her eyes wide and innocent. Of course, why wouldn't it be? I shrugged. You just seem, I don't know, different, distant. She laughed, a forced sound that grated on my nerves. You're imagining things, Lisa. Maybe you should take a day off, relax a bit. I bristled at her condescension, but let it slide. Maybe you're right. Days turned into weeks and Emily showed no signs of leaving. She and Alex grew closer, their bond deepening in ways that made my stomach churn. They spent hours together, their heads bent close as they whispered and laughed. I felt like an outsider in my own home, and the more I tried to insert myself into their conversations, the more they seemed to shut me out. One night, I decided to confront Alex about it. We were lying in bed, and I could hear Emily's soft laughter from the living room. Alex, can we talk? He turned to me, his face shadowed in the dim light. What's up? I've been feeling off lately about you and Emily. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. Lisa, there's nothing going on. She's your sister. She's going through a tough time. We're just trying to make her feel better. I know, but I feel like you're more focused on her than on us. He pulled me into his arms, his touch warm and reassuring. You're imagining things, love. Emily's family. We need to support her. I wanted to believe him, to trust that everything was okay. But as I lay there, listening to the faint sounds of Emily's laughter, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. The tipping point came on a rainy Saturday afternoon. I had planned a romantic day for Alex and me, just the two of us, no distractions. But when I suggested it, he hesitated. I promised Emily I'd help her with something, he said, avoiding my eyes. My heart sank. Can it wait? We haven't spent any time together, just the two of us in weeks. He sighed. Lisa, she needs me. We can have our day another time. I nodded, trying to hide my disappointment. Sure, another time. As the rain poured outside, I watched Alex and Emily huddle together on the couch, their heads close as they whispered and laughed. I felt like a ghost in my own home, invisible and unwanted. That night, after Alex had gone to bed, I found Emily in the kitchen, pouring herself a glass of wine. We need to talk, I said, my voice trembling with emotion. She looked at me, her eyes wide and innocent. About what? About you and Alex, this closeness between you two. It's not normal. She laughed, a sound that sent chills down my spine. You're being paranoid, Lisa. We're just friends. Friends don't act the way you two do, I snapped. I want you to leave. Her expression changed, a flicker of something dark and dangerous in her eyes. I'm not going anywhere. Emily, this is my home. You can't stay here forever. She stepped closer, her voice low and menacing. Watch me. I stood there stunned and speechless as she brushed past me and disappeared into the living room. I felt a chill run down my spine, realizing that my sister was not the person I thought she was. And in that moment, I knew that my life was about to change in ways I couldn't even begin to imagine. From that night forward, Emily's presence felt more like an invasion. Her words haunted me, but when I tried to talk to Alex about it, he brushed it off. She's going through a tough time, he'd say. Give her a break but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Emily's behavior became more brazen. She started wearing revealing clothes around the house, tiny shorts and low-cut tops that made my stomach churn. She and Alex would share lingering looks and inside jokes that I was no longer a part of. The laughter that once filled our home now felt like mocking echoes of a life that was slipping away from me. 
One particularly uncomfortable evening, I came home late from work, exhausted and ready to unwind. As I walked through the door, I heard music and laughter coming from the living room. I stepped inside to find Alex and Emily dancing together. The lights dimmed and a bottle of wine half empty on the coffee table. Hey, you're home, Emily said brightly, disentangling herself from Alex. Join us. I forced a smile, but inside I was seething. No thanks, I'm tired. Alex looked at me, his eyes glassy from the wine. Come on, Lisa, don't be a party pooper. I'm really not in the mood, I replied, my voice strained. I think I'll just go to bed. As I turned to leave, I heard Emily giggle. You're missing out, she called after me. I shut the bedroom door behind me, my heart pounding. I felt like a stranger in my own home, and I didn't know how much more I could take. The next day, I decided to confront Emily directly. I couldn't keep pretending that everything was fine. I found her in the kitchen making breakfast. We need to talk, I said, my voice trembling with anger. She looked up, her expression innocent. About what? About you and Alex, I said, struggling to keep my voice steady. This has to stop, Emily. You're crossing a line. She smirked, a cold, calculating look in her eyes. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play dumb, I snapped. The flirting, the touching, the way you dress around him, it's not okay. She shrugged, completely unfazed. Maybe you're just insecure. My blood boiled. This isn't about insecurity, it's about respect. You need to leave, Emily. Her expression hardened. I told you I'm not going anywhere. Why are you doing this? I asked, my voice breaking. You're my sister. She stepped closer, her eyes narrowing. Because I can. Those words hung in the air, a chilling reminder of how much power she had over my life. I felt my resolve crumbling, my heart breaking. I couldn't understand why she was doing this, why she was so determined to destroy the bond we once had. Over the next few weeks, things only got worse. Alex became more distant, more secretive. He'd spend long hours away from home, always with some vague excuse. And when he was home, he was glued to his phone, texting and smiling at messages I never got to see. One night after Alex had fallen asleep, I decided to check his phone. I knew it was wrong, but I was desperate for answers. My hands shook as I scrolled through his messages, my heart pounding in my chest. And then I saw them. Dozens of texts between him and Emily. They were flirtatious, intimate, filled with inside jokes and plans to meet up. My worst fears were confirmed. I felt sick to my stomach, my hands trembling as I put the phone down. I couldn't believe it. The man I loved, the man I trusted, was having an affair with my own sister. I felt like my world was crashing down around me, the weight of the betrayal crushing my chest. The next morning, I confronted Alex. We need to talk, I said, my voice shaking. He looked at me, confused. What's wrong? I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. I know about you and Emily. His face went pale, his eyes wide with shock. What are you talking about? Don't lie to me, Alex, I said, my voice breaking. I saw the messages. He ran a hand through his hair, looking away. Lisa, it's not what you think. Then what is it? I demanded, because it looks like you've been sneaking around with my sister. He sighed, his shoulders slumping. It's complicated. Complicated? I echoed, feeling a surge of anger. You're cheating on me with Emily. How is that complicated? He looked at me, his eyes filled with guilt. I'm sorry, Lisa. I never meant for this to happen. I felt tears welling up in my eyes. How long has this been going on? He hesitated, then finally admitted, a few months. My heart shattered. A few months? And you never thought to tell me? I didn't know how, he said, his voice pleading. I didn't want to hurt you. I laughed bitterly, wiping away my tears. Well, you've done a fantastic job of that. I turned and walked away, my mind reeling. I couldn't believe it. My husband and my sister, the two people I trusted most, had betrayed me in the worst possible way. I felt lost, shattered, my world turned upside down. And as I lay in bed that night, I realized that my life would never be the same again. My world was a blur of pain and confusion. Days melted into nights, and I could barely keep track of time. The betrayal cut deep, leaving me numb and hollow. I avoided Alex and Emily as much as possible, but living under the same roof made it impossible to escape the tension that suffocated our home. The weeks crawled by, each day more unbearable than the last. I tried to distract myself with work, throwing myself into projects and deadlines, but nothing could take my mind off the nightmare my life had become. 
The upcoming birthday celebration that once excited me now felt like a cruel joke. Alex, oblivious or perhaps just in denial about the severity of the situation, continued with his plans for my birthday. I couldn't fathom how he thought a party could fix what was broken, but I went along with it, too exhausted to fight. I needed to see this facade through, if only to understand what had happened to us. The day of the party arrived, and our house was filled with friends and family, all blissfully unaware of the turmoil beneath the surface. Emily played the perfect hostess, her smile radiant as she mingled with the guests. I watched her, feeling a mixture of rage and sorrow. How could she act so normal, so unaffected? Alex was unusually attentive, his arm around my waist, his kisses lingering on my cheek. It was as if he were trying to convince himself and everyone else that everything was fine. But I saw through the act. Every touch felt like a lie, every smile a dagger to my heart. As the evening wore on, the atmosphere grew increasingly uncomfortable. I caught glimpses of Alex and Emily sharing secretive looks, their laughter a painful reminder of their betrayal. My friends commented on how happy we seemed, how perfect our life looked, and I forced myself to smile, to nod, to keep up the charade. Then came the moment that would shatter any remaining illusion of normalcy. In the middle of the party, Alex received a phone call. His expression changed, his face going pale as he excused himself and stepped outside. I watched him through the window, his back turned as he spoke in hushed tones. Curiosity and dread gnawed at me. I couldn't stand the suspense any longer. I slipped away from the guests and followed him outside, my heart pounding in my chest. I crept closer, straining to hear his words. Are you sure? He was saying. I'll be right there. I stepped forward, my voice trembling. Alex, what's going on? He spun around, his eyes wide with surprise. Lisa, it's nothing. Just a work emergency. I didn't believe him for a second. A work emergency? At this hour? On my birthday? He hesitated, then sighed. Look, it's complicated. I'll explain everything later. Explain it now, I demanded. I'm tired of being kept in the dark. He ran a hand through his hair, looking conflicted. I can't, Lisa, not right now. Anger surged through me. Then I'm coming with you. His eyes widened. No, you're not. Stay here. Enjoy your party. I'm not letting you walk away again, I said, my voice firm. We're going to face this together. He looked at me for a long moment, then finally nodded. Fine, let's go. We drove in silence, the tension between us palpable. I had no idea where we were going or what to expect. My mind raced with possibilities, each one more horrifying than the last. When we finally pulled up to a small, rundown apartment complex, my heart sank. Alex led me to a door on the second floor and knocked. A moment later, it swung open, and there stood Emily, her face a mask of surprise and guilt. Alex? Lisa, what are you doing here? She stammered. I could ask you the same thing, I said, my voice cold. Alex stepped forward, his expression pleading. Emily, we need to talk. She glanced between us, then stepped aside to let us in. The apartment was sparsely furnished, a stark contrast to the warmth of our home. I felt a wave of nausea as I realized the implications of what was happening. We need to tell her, Alex said, his voice breaking the silence. Emily looked at me her eyes filled with a mixture of fear and defiance. Tell me what? Alex took a deep breath, his shoulders slumping. Lisa, Emily is pregnant. The words hit me like a physical blow, knocking the breath from my lungs. I staggered back, my mind reeling. Pregnant. My sister was pregnant with my husband's child. The room spun around me, and I felt like I was going to be sick. You're lying, I whispered, my voice barely audible. Emily shook her head, tears streaming down her face. It's true, Lisa. I'm so sorry. I turned to Alex, my eyes filled with hurt and betrayal. How could you do this to me? How could you both do this to me? Alex reached for me, but I recoiled, my skin crawling at his touch. Lisa, please. I never meant for this to happen. It was a mistake. A mistake? I echoed, my voice rising. A mistake is forgetting to pick up milk. This, this is unforgivable. Emily stepped forward, her voice trembling. Lisa, I know you hate me right now, but please try to understand. I didn't plan this. It just happened. Just happened? I repeated, my voice dripping with sarcasm. You don't just happen to get pregnant by your sister's husband. She looked down, her shoulders shaking with sobs. I'm so sorry. I felt a surge of anger, my vision blurring with tears. Sorry isn't good enough, Emily. You've ruined everything. 
I turned and fled from the apartment, the walls closing in around me. I ran down the stairs and out into the night, the cold air stinging my cheeks. I had no idea where I was going, but I knew I couldn't stay there, couldn't face the reality of what my life had become. I wandered the streets for hours, my mind a whirlwind of pain and anger. I couldn't believe this was happening, couldn't believe the people I loved most had betrayed me in such a cruel and unforgivable way. When I finally returned home, the party was over, and the house was dark and silent. I stood in the doorway, feeling the weight of the betrayal settle over me like a suffocating blanket. My life as I knew it was over, and I had no idea how to move forward. As I collapsed onto the couch, sobs racking my body, I realized that my sister hadn't just ruined my birthday. She had ruined my life. The next few days passed in a haze. I barely ate, barely slept. The house felt like a prison, every corner a reminder of the life I thought I had. Alex tried to talk to me, but I shut him out, the pain too raw to confront. Emily thankfully had disappeared, her absence a small mercy. One evening, as I sat staring blankly at the television, Alex approached me cautiously. Lisa, we need to talk, he said, his voice low and filled with regret. I looked up at him, my eyes hollow. There's nothing to talk about, Alex. You and Emily, you've destroyed everything. He knelt beside me, his eyes pleading. Please, just listen. I know I've hurt you, but I want to make things right. I shook my head, tears streaming down my face. How can you make this right? She's pregnant with your child, our marriage. It's over. He grabbed my hands, his touch desperate. I love you, Lisa. I made a terrible mistake, but I don't want to lose you. I pulled my hands away, my heart breaking all over again. You already have, Alex. The moment you chose her over me, you lost me. The silence between us was deafening. I stood up, my legs shaky. I need some time alone. I can't be here right now. I left the house, walking aimlessly through the streets. The night air was cool, a stark contrast to the turmoil inside me. As I wandered, I realized I had a choice to make, to let this betrayal define me or to find the strength to rebuild my life. One thing was certain. I could no longer live in the shadow of their deceit. I decided to stay at a hotel for a few days to clear my mind. I needed space, a place to think without the constant reminders of Alex and Emily. My phone buzzed nonstop with messages from Alex and concerned friends, but I ignored them all. I wasn't ready to face anyone yet. On the third day, I finally called my parents. They deserved to know what was happening. Their reactions were exactly as I expected. Shock, anger, and a deep, aching sadness. How could she do this to you? My mother cried, her voice trembling. Your own sister. I don't know, Mom, I replied, tears welling up in my eyes. I don't understand any of it. My father, always the calm one, spoke gently. Lisa, come home. We'll figure this out together. I packed my bags and headed to my parents' house, grateful for their support. When I arrived, they embraced me tightly, their presence a small comfort in the storm. We sat in the living room and I recounted the whole sordid tale. My parents were furious, their anger directed equally at Alex and Emily. She's not welcome here, my mother declared, not after what she's done. As we talked, I realized how much I had been bottling up my pain, trying to cope on my own. My parents' unwavering support gave me the strength I needed to confront the situation head on. The next morning, my mother handed me a cup of tea. We'll get through this, Lisa. You're stronger than you think. I nodded, feeling a glimmer of hope. I wasn't alone in this. I had my family, and with their help, I would find a way to move forward. But as much as I wanted to rebuild my life, the road ahead was uncertain. I knew that facing Emily and Alex again was inevitable. But I needed to be ready. I needed to find my strength and reclaim my life from the ashes of their betrayal. The next few weeks at my parents' house were a mix of healing and heartache. My parents wrapped me in their support, but the looming confrontation with Emily and Alex hung over me like a dark cloud. I knew I couldn't hide forever. I had to face them, to reclaim my life and move forward. But first, I needed to rebuild myself, piece by piece. I decided to take a leave of absence from work. My boss was understanding, and my colleagues sent messages of support, though I couldn't bring myself to respond. Instead, I focused on small, daily victories. Getting out of bed, taking walks, talking to a therapist. Each step forward, no matter how small, was a triumph. One afternoon, as I was walking in the park near my parents' house, I ran into an old friend from high school, Jenna. She was the kind of friend you lose touch with over the years, but pick up with right where you left off. 
We chatted for a while, and when she learned about my situation, she was both shocked and supportive. You need a distraction, she said firmly. Why don't we go out for coffee sometime, catch up? I hesitated, but then nodded. Yeah, I'd like that. Our coffee dates became a regular thing. Jenna was a breath of fresh air, her laughter infectious. She reminded me of who I was before the betrayal, strong, independent, and capable of finding joy even in the darkest times. Her friendship was a lifeline, pulling me out of my despair. Through Jenna, I reconnected with other friends, slowly rebuilding my social circle. Each interaction, each moment of normalcy, chipped away at the pain, replacing it with hope. I realized I wasn't as alone as I had felt. People cared about me, wanted to see me happy. Despite the progress, the thought of confronting Emily and Alex lingered in the back of my mind. I knew it was necessary, but the idea filled me with dread. How could I face them without breaking down? One evening, as I sat with my parents, my mother broached the subject. Lisa, have you thought about what you want to do about Alex and Emily? I sighed, setting down my tea. I have. I need to talk to them to get some closure. But I don't know if I'm ready. My father nodded. You'll know when the time is right, and when you're ready, we'll be here for you. The next day, I made a decision. I called Alex and asked to meet. He agreed, sounding hopeful, but I kept my tone neutral. This wasn't about reconciliation. It was about finding closure and taking the next step in my journey. We met at a small cafe in town, a neutral place where I felt safe. When I walked in, Alex was already there, looking anxious. He stood as I approached, but I didn't offer a hug. Instead, I sat down, taking a deep breath. Lisa, he began, his voice filled with regret. I'm so sorry for everything. I held up a hand to stop him. I'm not here for apologies, Alex. I'm here for answers. He nodded, his eyes filled with sorrow. Ask me anything. The conversation that followed was painful but necessary. I asked him why, how, and when. His answers were hard to hear, but they helped me understand, even if only a little. It wasn't about me or our marriage, he claimed. It was about his weaknesses, his failures. It didn't make it right, but it gave me some semblance of closure. Finally, I asked the question that had been haunting me. Do you love her? He looked away, his silence speaking volumes. I don't know, he said finally. I think maybe I did in a way, but it was wrong and I regret everything. I nodded, feeling a strange sense of relief. I needed to hear that. Thank you. We sat in silence for a few moments, the weight of our broken relationship hanging between us. Then I stood up. Goodbye, Alex. He looked up, his eyes filled with tears. Goodbye, Lisa. I hope you find happiness. As I walked away, I felt a strange mixture of sorrow and liberation. The chapter with Alex was closing, but a new one was beginning. I knew the road ahead wouldn't be easy, but for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was heading in the right direction. The meeting with Alex, while painful, gave me a sense of clarity. The next step was even harder, confronting Emily. I couldn't move forward until I faced her and dealt with the devastation she had caused. The thought of seeing her again made my stomach churn, but I knew it was necessary. I decided to call her, the phone feeling heavy in my hand as it rang. She answered on the third ring, her voice tentative. Lisa? Emily, I said, my voice cold. We need to talk. There was a long pause. Okay, when and where? Tomorrow, at mom and dad's. We need to settle this. All right, she replied softly. I'll be there. The next day, I arrived at my parents' house early. They had decided to give us some privacy, heading out for the afternoon. I appreciated their understanding, knowing this would be one of the hardest things I'd ever have to do. When Emily arrived, she looked nervous, her eyes puffy from crying. She stepped inside, glancing around as if expecting an ambush. Lisa, I... Save it, I interrupted, my voice hard. Just sit down. She complied, sitting on the edge of the couch her hands clasped tightly in her lap. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my emotions. Why, Emily? Why did you do it? Tears welled up in her eyes. I don't know. I was lonely and vulnerable after my breakup. Alex was there, and it just happened. I scoffed, shaking my head. It just happened. You seduced my husband and got pregnant by him. That doesn't just happen. She sobbed, burying her face in her hands. I'm so sorry, Lisa. I know I've ruined everything. Sorry isn't enough, I said, my voice cracking. You were my sister. I trusted you, and you betrayed me in the worst possible way. I know, she whispered, 
her shoulders shaking. I hate myself for it. I don't expect you to forgive me, but please believe me when I say I never meant to hurt you. I looked at her, my heart aching with a mix of anger and sorrow. What are you going to do about the baby? She wiped her tears, looking down. I'm keeping it, but I don't expect anything from Alex. This is my responsibility. I sighed, feeling the weight of her words. Do you love him? She shook her head, fresh tears streaming down her face. I thought I did, but now I realize it was just a mistake. A horrible, terrible mistake. The silence between us was heavy, filled with the pain of shattered trust and broken dreams. Finally, I stood up, feeling a strange sense of resolve. I don't know if I can ever forgive you, Emily, but I can't keep carrying this anger. I need to move on. She looked up at me, her eyes filled with desperation. Lisa, please. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm begging you to give me a chance to make things right. I shook my head, the tears I'd been holding back finally spilling over. I can't promise anything. Right now, I just need to focus on healing. Maybe someday we can find a way to rebuild our relationship, but it won't be easy. She nodded, her own tears flowing freely. I understand. Thank you for even considering it. I turned to leave, pausing at the door. Goodbye, Emily. I hope you find a way to make peace with yourself. As I walked out of the house, I felt a strange mixture of relief and sorrow. The confrontation hadn't magically healed the wounds, but it had given me a sense of closure. I knew it would be a long road to recovery, but I felt stronger, more determined to rebuild my life. The weeks that followed were filled with small steps towards healing. I focused on my own well-being, surrounding myself with supportive friends and family. I found solace in therapy, where I could unravel the tangled emotions that still haunted me. Slowly but surely, I began to find a sense of peace. One evening, Jenna and I were sitting in a cozy cafe, sipping on hot chocolate and chatting about everything and nothing. You seem different, she observed, a smile playing on her lips. More at ease. I nodded, feeling a warmth spread through me. I think I'm finally starting to heal. It's been a long journey, but I'm getting there. She reached across the table, squeezing my hand. I'm proud of you, Lisa. You've come so far. As I walked home that night, I felt a sense of hope for the future. The pain of betrayal would always be a part of my story, but it didn't define me. I was stronger than I'd ever realized, and I was ready to face whatever came next.